that experience of being off the ground does something to you physically. Your heart will start beating faster. You'll start breathing heavier, whether or not it's because you're physically exhausted or not. We all have this experience of this isn't supposed to be happening. My feet are supposed to be on the ground. The University of Alaska Anchorage hosted a workshop and a class uh, for a semester that I just absolutely loved and have been doing it ever since. I started Ariel about 10 years ago, which is like what you see in Cirque du Soleil where people flip around on fabric. Once I left the University of Alaska Anchorage, there was very little options for practicing and there were no studios available. So you had to be a little bit resourceful about where to hang and how you could practice and with whom. I had very few places that I could hang outside. There are a lot of requirements and safety issues that you have to meet in order to hang off of something. The temptation to hang off of anything is strong, but there's also some real dangers if you don't find a really strong beam or something. So aerialists all here always on the hunt for load-bearing beams, whether that be old steel buildings or bridges or structures that could hold a car. But it's difficult to find one that is tall enough and strong enough to make it a safe activity. My stage combat teacher and I worked for a long time together on aerial, and so we had a good eye for load-bearing beams. So we, we found a few places that were strong enough to hold and worked for us as aerialists. There are definitely a lot of risks associated with doing aerial acrobatics. People get injured every year. People get hurt, they fall, there's rigging failures. There are many times that we hear stories about performers that have gotten injured whether it was a mistake that was made or if it was just a freak accident. So there's a lot of precautions that really need to be taken before you do any aerial. Even if I have to be resourceful, even if I have to figure out other ways, it's one of my lines. I will never do aerial alone. It started out as a safety thing that I invited other people to do aerial with me. Hi, Sammy. I moved back to Anchorage and was looking for a community to do aerial with and, and wasn't able to find one. I ended up starting my own studio and inviting people to come and work out with me and to do aerial and to learn this art form that I love. And as we continued to practice, more people joined, more people wanted to learn about this art form, more people wanted to try Ariel for themselves. So now there's this huge community that has been built that we have friends no matter where we go in this state. I'm incredibly grateful that I've had the opportunity in Anchorage to build a community of my own. I count myself incredibly lucky that I am able to practice outside in Alaska. We have such amazing scenery, whether it be Hatcher's Pass or out at Kinnick or at the Mud Flats. To be able to be in that place and think, what character can you build around this? The creation part, the, the expression is what I love. I can emote through my movement. While I still consider it a performance art, 
the performing in front of people is not what I need. It's not the audience that makes the art. Uh, it's the ability to express myself through movement.